hello and good morning so with this video we are going to uh, deal with a, a very specific topic in uh, javascript programming uh, with, that uh, will become very useful uh, uh, in, the, in the ordinary handling of data structures uh, which is uh, functional programming so it's not a big topic it's not a big uh, um, lecture but uh, it will give us uh, four or five functions that we can rely on in the future in uh, when we are programming especially uh, with uh, with elements uh, or lists uh, of elements uh, in our applications um, so the basically javascript is a language that supports uh, a method of programming called uh, functional programming and uh, functional programming is uh, a way of um, of uh, uh, defining your program defining your uh, application uh, by structuring that uh, around uh, functions uh, um, instead of uh, statements basically <coughs> And so um, the idea is to leverage uh, all the power that we already have with the callbacks. Uh, we already know that in JavaScript functions are very versatile. And uh, we can, uh, in many cases, avoid the very ugly constructs like uh, uh, if inside the for or a, let a set of loops uh, or nested loops uh, for, for managing, for, for executing basic operations across uh, data structures. So uh, we already have uh, some, some idea about uh, um, some uh, functional primitives, for example, the filter function that is used to, uh, to extract uh, a subarray from, from an existing array. Uh, and uh, as you see, instead of uh, having the control outside and then the operation inside, uh, functional programming is the other way around. So actually we have the data structure and then the operation that we want to apply to that. So, uh, of course, this, uh, the, this method of programming relies on the fact that functions uh, are um, re really uh, first-class objects in JavaScript. Uh, in some cases, we can uh, uh, create uh, so-called higher-order functions. So a function that takes a another function as a parameter and can modify that uh, function and can return a yet another function. So actually, we are, instead of... Uh, uh, manipulating objects uh, we are manipulating functions uh, um, and uh, and redefining them uh, many times and composing them uh, and so on so this is possible it's very quite uh, easy to do in, in javascript uh, also the, the simple cases are composing different functions in, and especially chaining them so having a set of calls uh, one after the other that will uh, apply uh, subsequent manipulation steps uh, to a given data structure so all, all of these uh, will give us, uh, uh, say, a very uh, compact way of writing uh, the basic uh, uh, common operation on data structure, especially on iterable data structures. Um, wh one other uh, aspect of functional programming that we, we should probably uh, want to learn is uh, to value, uh, um, uh, to avoid the mutability and to try to value immutable objects. Hmm. Uh, we'll see them much uh, deeper in, in React, where a lot of uh, variables cannot be muted, cannot be changed. Uh, but we should uh, learn the habit of creating objects uh, and uh, uh, not modifying them. Okay, uh, as, as much as possible, uh, we create an object, uh, and when you want to modify that, uh, you create a new one with the modified value. This gives uh, the, the advantage that uh, every function application will never have side effects. Uh, will never have effects uh, that will modify uh, some property or some elements of, of, of a collection. And so uh, will not have any expected, uh, unexpected results uh, and uh, it will not change the state of the system. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, is not a general principle. Of course, you want to modify something as a structure you can, but at the low level, ha handling uh, immutable objects is much easier uh, than handling mutable ones, so even if we have uh, to let some old habits go uh, and try to learn uh, thinking in this way. And if we have immutable objects, it is mu it's much easier uh, to, to deal with the functional approach. Uh, today we'll have a look at the five uh, uh, or six uh, uh, basic functions uh, um, that uh, are uh, applicable for arrays. Hmm? Uh, it's just a head start, uh, many, many other uh, say functional uh, libraries exist, uh, but uh, uh, these, one, these functions are already predefined for arrays uh, in, in JS, uh, and so uh, it's, uh, it's worth looking uh, deeper at them. Uh, we already know that uh, arrays can be iterated with the for of statement, remember of and not in, 
or a regular four cycle but uh, uh, we uh, already saw part of the slide that says uh, uh, that, that you can iterate uh, for every element uh, or you can check whether some property uh, um, is valid for all the elements or for at least one element in the array or you can just manipulate an array by returning a new one with some given manipulation or to summarize a result uh, uh, from uh, an existing set of, uh, of elements hmm. so let's uh, see each of them in, uh, in detail more detail um, for each uh, is the simplest one conceptually that takes uh, uh, an array hmm. or it works in many iterable objects but for the sake of the example let's uh, think it's an array and uh, uh, it receives a callback and uh, uh, in this case uh, for example it's an arrow function uh, that will uh, take each element of the array and to each of these elements uh, it will apply the function it will run the function uh, with th that element as a parameter hmm? so uh, inside this callback function you can do whatever you want of course uh, you will know that the function will be called once per every element in the array hmm? so it's a sort of an implicit loop where you this instead of uh, specifying the body of a for loop uh, you specify a callback function that should be executed for every iteration this callback function is called synchronously so it's not an asynchronous callback but it's called synchronously so there's nothing complex about that uh, it may have three parameters the first parameter is uh, mandatory is actually the element that is being processed in the array so uh, the first callback the first time the callback is called uh, the, f the the parameter of the function of the callback is uh, the first element of the array the second time will be the second element and so on and optionally you can get if you add some more parameters to your callback you can uh, receive also the index number so 0 1 2 3 and so on of the element that is being passed to you in this moment and if you want also the reference to the entire to the whole array uh, if you need it in your uh, in your code hmm? so it may it may be useful in some cases to also have this information not just the value but where the value is located and in which array it, it was taken from of course this array uh, is the same uh, of the color so in this case it will be referenced to this uh, uh, letters uh, array but uh, uh, so you can always get it through a closure uh, but in some cases it's also useful to have it in the in the callback directly um, the for each method uh, just calls the function it doesn't return anything actually the for each method always returns uh, undefined and therefore it's not be, it cannot be changed so it cannot call any other method on the result of a for each it's just a, a way of looping uh, uh, implicitly uh, for each uh, usually does not mutate the array which is called uh, you the callback function may do whatever it wants so it may also change the content of the array but usually we, we wouldn't use uh, for each we would use map if you want uh, to, to modify the array in some way um, another function that is more or less in the spirit of uh, for each uh, that processes every element is the uh, every um, method uh, that will uh, uh, tell you whether all the elements of an array satisfy some boolean property in this case the callback function should return a boolean value uh, true or truthy or false or falsy and uh, and uh, this, they, all these callbacks have, have the same three arguments so the, the element the index and the array um, where the only mandatory one is the, is the element of course and uh, uh, it just uh, makes a, a sort of a, a boolean end over the property so it will every function will return true if for every element one two three four five the boolean function specified by the um, by the callback function uh, will uh, return true hmm? so all the values are true you don't you don't need to manage uh, true and false uh, false flags anymore uh, when you want to check whether a property applies to uh, all the elements and the dual of uh, every is sum that will return true if at least one element uh, satisfies the function uh, for example will turn true if uh, at least one element is an even number and we have at least number two so we'll uh, uh, the sum property will uh, return a true value and we will return false only if uh, 
the predicate, the boolean predicate um, fails for all the elements in the array. So there are very quick way of checking whether it's always true or always false a given property. Then uh, we come to the three main uh, really functional uh, say methods. Uh, there are the famous ones, a map filter uh, and reduce. And especially map and reduce uh, are in a way a sort of synonymous with functional programming. Hmm? And there are uh, many other uh, contexts, uh, for example, uh, non-relational databases, where most operations tend to be expressed uh, in terms of these uh, map and reduce primitives. So, what does map do? Uh, quite easily, map will construct a new array. Uh, so the basic uh, idea is that map will create a new array starting from an existing array. And the new array will have exactly the same number of elements, of the uh, of the existing one and you can construct these elements as you want uh, starting from the current ones you are not forced to uh, if you receive a, uh, for example an array of numbers you are not forced to return an array of numbers you can return an array of objects or whatever you want so just creating a new array with uh, as many elements as the original one and uh, where every element is a sort of a transformation arbitrary you can do whatever you want a transformation of the original element in that array hmm. so for example we have an array with three numbers and we replace it or we we construct a new array where every element is replaced by the square of that element so one will be replaced by one two will be replaced by four and three will be replaced by nine sorry replaced is not the real uh, correct word because we are not replacing a in any time in any point so a will remain equal uh, but we are creating a new one that in this case will contain three numbers uh, so the callback function the we should return the new value to be put into that specific array hmm. so graphically um, uh, you, you can find useful this visual uh, uh, visual representation uh, where, where you have an initial array you apply map uh, by specifying a transformation function okay something that will transform a current element into the new element it may be transforming a number into a number transforming a number into an object transforming an object into a number maybe extracting some property uh, but the, basically we are creating a new array we see the one to uh, we are sorry we have the same number of elements here we have four elements here and four elements will be contained in the result so we are not adding or removing elements we are just transforming them the um, the opposite operation that of reducing the number of uh, of elements <coughs> sorry is uh, implemented by the filter function this filter again creates a new array you see that this immutability concept is uh, uh, deep uh, inside this function so uh, all this function will create a new array will never modify the the, the original one hmm? uh, the filter function will create a new array uh, that will only contain those elements of the original array uh, that will pass a check okay so for example uh, we, i only return the elements where x where x is less than three so any boolean function that will return true or false will tell us which elements we want to retain and which element we want to drop and retaining means creating a new array with the same element with a subset of the elements uh, and those elements are the same are taken from um, from the original array so on one hand we have map that will uh, create uh, uh, new values starting from current ones but will not change the number of elements and filter that will reduce the number of elements uh, but will not change the value of these elements and so there are uh, designed to be combined together if we want to do both uh, operations so filter actually uh, lets only a subset uh, of the original data pass uh, through a given boolean condition <laughs> it will tell us uh, what is going to pass or not the last one which uh, the more a bit more complex than the others uh, at least to, to 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 grasp at the beginning um, is the reduce method uh, reduce takes a whole array and tries to shrink that array into a single number a single value maybe a number maybe an object and uh, 
it does that by taking every element of the array and uh, trying to um, accumulate uh, some operation over uh, the, um, the the final value so like when you are computing the sum of elements uh, you are summing the first one plus the second plus the third plus the fourth one so you are accumulating the results uh, of an addition you are computing a factorial you are accumulating the results of a multiplication you are computing the max or a mean of a uh, of a value of a, um, of a vector uh, you are accumulating the results of comparisons mm -hmm. so you are retaining the, the, the smaller or the bigger one uh, in the in the array and so on mm -hmm. so if we can formulate a computation done on a on a on a long array by the sick the, by the um, combination of small steps and every step will uh, add a new element uh, we consider a new element on top of the results of the first uh, n minus one elements so we can call the reducer to compute the, the operation so the prerequisite is that we can um, describe our operation by uh, ha adding the contribution of one element at a time and every step will consist of combining what we have to uh, up to now plus the new element that will result in the new result and that and the next call we will be again updated with the the the, the next element uh, in the array and so on mm. and so uh, this callback function gets uh, two parameters basically uh, one is called the accumulator so the partial result that we are creating uh, and the second is the, is the current value mm. the current value that we are trying to to join uh, to the to the, to the, to the accumulation uh, procedure um if we want we uh, we may also pass an initial value to um to initialize uh, the accumulator so the accumulator will start uh, at the value that we specify here or if no value is specified then the accumulator will start with the first uh, element uh, of the array mm -hmm. so in some cases like for <coughs> doing the sum of the elements uh, we don't need to initialize zero we just can, we may just start uh, uh, from the first element um, let's see a, a, a couple of examples uh, for example if we want to uh, compute the sum of all the elements we can just uh, have a, a two value function uh, accumulator and current value and uh, we return at every time the sum of the previous elements plus the current element and uh, this sum is initialized to zero and is returned um, let just check that uh, uh, just notice a detail that the initial value is not in the callback it's outside the callback so it's one parameter to reduce is not a parameter to callback okay so it's outside the callback function um, because it's just used for initializing the first call to the function hmm? so it's something that we specify outside so this uh, uh, initial value is not one parameter of the callback but is one the last parameter of reduce hmm? okay uh, in this case we are computing a factorial so we are starting from one and at every step uh, we are multiplying the current value by the accumulated uh, previous values which will be the multiplication of all the previous elements and so on and this is another way of uh, uh, computing uh, the maximum so if the um, if the current value is uh, smaller than the current result then we return uh, the current result because it's still bigger otherwise uh, we return the current value hmm? so if it is not smaller it means that it's bigger and so we are going to return the larger value and at the end the accumulator will retain the largest of the values in this case we don't have to specify any initial value because the first element is a good uh, starting point for the accumulator to uh, it's better to start from the first element rather than from uh, an arbitrary value of course we don't need this because uh, we already have a max function for for arrays but just to to see how it works Okay, so this callback is sometimes called uh, the reducer function also hmm, that gives the name uh, to the uh, to the whole uh, um, to the whole method uh, so it's a bit 
strange thinking in this way you have to break down the operation into uh, single steps uh, and the only thing you have to remember that in every step you cannot uh, use uh, the previous element for example of the array you can only use the current element and the previous value of the accumulator hmm? so you should think your uh, your procedures in these two steps uh, and then uh, at, the, at the point you can very easily uh, create this reduce uh, um, action uh, this is another, another visual example that say that uh, uh, if you want to create a source uh, you must cook every item in the in the uh, in the recipe and then adding every item after it's cooked to the source so that at the end you have the, the full source with all the cooked elements inside okay it's a bit of a um, of a stretch of an, of an example but uh, will help us to remember that we are adding to something that's already cooked every item for on which we are doing some processing hmm? uh, so uh, an example uh, assume that we have a set of uh, vehicles so this uh, is an array of objects hmm? uh, these objects have all the same properties make model type and price and we want to uh compute the average price of all suvs hmm? so first of all we must uh, uh, from this uh, array uh, extract uh, only the suvs so we are we must uh, uh, delete all the other or forget or not consider uh, all the elements except those that have type equal to suv so uh, what we want to do is to take the vehicles and apply a filter a primitive to that uh, and the condition for filtering is that uh, uh, v dot type uh, is uh, SUV. You see that the uh, this is an array of objects. So for every iteration, we v will be the object, the whole object, the, the whole line with the object with the, with the four properties. So we must check uh, the attribute of an object uh, and compare it with the uh, desired value. And uh, the result of the filter will be the same array with uh, only these rows one two three four and five these rows uh, uh, and the, the resulting array will contain the full objects so five full objects in the, the array we don't need all these objects uh, we just need the numbers so we want to transform an array of objects into an array of numbers and these numbers correspond to the price property so we are just mapping by creating an array containing the price property for every object that they see and these objects are of course the only ones only the ones that were filtered in the previous step and uh, so we have uh, an array of uh, five numbers it would be 24,000 31,000 34,000 45 and 31 and 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 bucks and uh, uh, so there will be an array of five numbers uh, so we can co compute uh, the um, the average of that by computing a sum for example and dividing the sum by the, uh, the length of the array so it would be uh, every time we sum one-fifth of the total price uh, starting from zero so it's just uh, we are using reduce to compute the average so you see that uh, um, we we are not modifying the database in any way but we are doing some sort of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, operations one change to the other so this is the chaining uh, um, approach that we discussed before uh, this is an array when I apply filter again I have an array it will be a different array but it will be still be an array so we can still apply other methods like map that will return another array and so on the only element that will not return an array is reduce and so it should be at the end if we, if we want it of course and uh, so at that point we have the average uh, there's one um, detail uh, about uh, uh, functional elements uh, especially since we are going to work a lot with the DOM elements uh, and uh, we we learned that uh, DOM as um, an element list uh, type uh, and uh, that looks like a list so when we extract for example uh, with a query selector all it will return a not list object and not list uh, uh, is a sort of an array but it's not really an array so it only has some uh, some methods defined for example for each is defined because it works on every iterable and the not list is an iterable uh, type of object 
so for example if we want to add uh, an, event, an event listener to a set of, uh, uh, of elements uh, you just select these elements uh, and for each of them you uh, execute the add event listener uh, method to your elements for example but uh, <coughs> In uh, all the other functional methods uh, like filter map are not defined uh, into an odd list so for example I'm uh, selecting all these elements here query selector all uh, and uh, this node list uh, I want to extract uh, uh, the IDs of these elements for example hmm? uh, the extract the IDs uh, of the elements that match this only if they contain a given class so i would it's a classical application i have a list i filter some elements uh, and and i extract some attribute with map and i do something with this uh, uh, filter list will be a, a set of ids in this case the only problem is that uh, the starting array this uh, um, filter list uh, is not uh, that that uh, sorry this not list that i got here is not a real array hmm? it's a node list uh, object and so uh, we must first convert that into a, a real array in order to be able to apply filter and map so whenever you want to apply filter and map uh, to a dom uh, list you must first convert that and this uh, uh, highlighted in yellow are the two ways uh, the two canonical ways of converting any iterable into an array the the shortest one is the with the spread operator so we are spreading the content of the list uh, and constructing an array with those elements or uh, it's equivalent we can use the array from that just unrolls uh, the iterable and construct an array so they are, they are equivalent i find the first one more readable because you don't have to remember array from or array of all the array methods um, and it's but a bit more explicit but in any case we are taking the not list creating an array object out of that and applying a couple of functional methods into the, this, the, the resulting array. Hmm? So it's just a step that you must remember. If you are trying to do not list dot filter, it will not work hmm? because these, these uh, not list are not real arrays. Yes, I remember that. Okay, so uh, functional programming is a very big topic. We are just uh, touching the surface here. Uh, both in general uh, as, the and as a programming style and uh, specifically in, in JavaScript that's uh, most, uh, we, you, you could go much deeper we, are, we have some pointers if you are interested but uh, at least we should be proficient with these methods that will be very useful for analyzing uh, uh, parts of the DOM page or creating parts of the page because in many cases we are dealing with list of elements uh, a list of, of uh, fragments of pages and so on so uh, having a, a, a synthetic and compact way of manipulating this list instead of uh, uh, dying with the nested for and if statements uh, it's much much better so thank you and that's all for this topic